Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we are doing the Andrin Guide. This is going to be an Andrin DPS guide, Mr. Slashy Slashy himself. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching. Please let me know what sort of things you, you like and dislike about this video. Feedback and or compliments are always greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get into it. So with Andrin, he is a scout. He goes, his default here is the start of your turn, gain fast. Doesn't really play much into the DPS version of him. It does make it harder to manipulate your team order uh, beyond the first turn. This does say at the start of your turn, so the first turn is not the case. Uh, Andrin also has the highest base speed in general. So Andrin's thing is go fast, which we will uh, not be playing into as the DPS version. Uh, so it actually makes our life a little harder. Let's be, let's be fair. Uh, level two, we have a couple options here. Maneuver says hey when you spend energy draw cards uh nice to get our deck more consistent but what we want is wild hunt for one turn only uh we get plus two mark charges and every energy we spend we get mark on a random monster yes it's on a random monster but because we're going to trigger it so many times in a turn it'll just be a very nice plus two our damage so mark by default says plus one damage after powerful but also, we're going to have a perk that will make it so that this mark reduces the resistances of slashing, which is the damage we're going to be playing into. So this really greatly increased our damage, especially on a single target or if we can, you know, someone that we can guarantee all the mark is going where we want it to go. Uh, next, we have Range Mastery Momentum. Range Mastery is for ranged attacks, which we is not doing. And Momentum, melee attacks, that's what we're doing. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's a one energy rebate, so it's basically we're gaining three energy a turn, and that rebate, it doesn't have to start in our hand to get the benefit, because if you look at range mastery, it says cards that start in hand are reduced by one. It's not the case with the momentum. Even if we have no attacks in our starting hand and then we draw into them, we can still get the energy rebate on them later, which is a key point with Andrin because he starts with a lot of cards that draw cards in his deck. Um, powerful, there is no way for... there's only one way for a scout to get powerful from themselves, which is the song. Uh, so powerful is a, a very, I'm going to say it, powerful thing for us. Uh, you only get one powerful, but with a perk, that's going to be two powerful. So you can get six powerful in a turn, which is a magical number when we talk about powerful perks. And I'll go talk about that later. Just remember that we can get six powerful in a turn once we hit level three, guaranteed, as long as we're playing three melee attacks. So our goal is to be playing three melee attacks and ideally play some cheap melee attacks first to trigger this and then our big melee attacks at the end to uh, benefit from it. So when we're at those max powerful stacks on our turn. Next up, we have Repost, which says, hey, apply mark and block. But you, I mean, when you block, apply mark. We don't plan on blocking, we plan on killing. So for our option, it's serrated weapons. Uh, for the next 10 times we damage with a hit, we gain sharp, we apply bleed, and we have increased damage for it. The key here is the sharp. So we basically gain, with a sharp perk, we gain 20 sharp, which the cap with restricted power is 50. So this gets us the majority of the way to the sharp cap without any sort of items affecting it. If we have an item that increases sharp by one, then we're we're three-fifths of the way there. Plus, we likely are going to be having other people feed us sharp. Uh, we will try to give ourselves a little bit of sharp early on, but for the most part, we're not going to have much of it ourselves, and we're going to cut all out of it once we get serrated weapons. Because once you get serrated weapons, you're basically going to be capped on sharp or in significant enough amounts of sharp that it's just becoming absurd if you're not running restricted power. So it's, it's really the sharp we like here. Bleed's nice and all, but... Compared to the rest of our damage, it's not a thing. Same thing with plus four all damage. I'm not going to say no to plus four all damage, but, you know, sharp. And last but not least, Markmanship says ranged attacks. We will not be doing ranged attacks. So, Mark for Death is our weapon of choice here. Remember, Mark with a perk will be reducing the slashing resistances of our opponents. So, this is just a major damage increase for the last few fights of the game. Uh, yeah, that's it for talents. Uh, let's go into starting deck. So with Andrin, whoops, I have my screens pulled up on the wrong thing here. Uh, we don't have to change too much of the starting deck. The biggest thing you got to notice here, like, so with these guides, I'm doing them here on Madness 12 and I'm, I'm spending a decent amount of shards because I want to show you if you have lots of shards, what you can spend them on. And if you don't have enough shards, you'll spend, you know, you won't get all the things I list here. You'll kind of pick and choose. The most important thing here, I think, is upgrading the slices to... Uh, 
applying mark and getting the blade dance. So these slices, there is a zero cost option, which is nice and all, but mark is just such a good damage multiplier early game. And then later game, we have a lot of talents that'll do it and it will be reducing the slashing resistance of our target. So overall, this is just a very efficient damage card for us. It increases future hits and it's a decent hit itself. And remember, we want to eventually be playing a play pattern of three attacks and then a big attack. So these slices help encourage that play pattern of cheap slice, cheap slice, big attack. And the big attack we want to do on AOE targets. So if we go for slashing, whoops, slashing, there aren't many slashing cards available to scouts, at least not early on. Um, and there's really only one AOE and that is Blade Dance. So you'll want to pick up one or two of these, assuming you can do divinations or you can craft two on commons. Um, this is our, our big finisher in the early fights. Pardon me one second. And this is our big finisher uh, in the early fights and our big massive AoE damage, basically saying hit four targets or repeat three. Uh, and then on the single target fights, we want to bring in this double strike and this blade flurry uh, and change them so they specifically say monster instead of because double strike says back monster by default and blade flurry says front monster by default. Yes, you can leave them at front and back and probably play around it, but just the versatility and ease of play upgrading them to the blue helps a tremendous amount. And the reason we pick these over any other options like say dual strikes is because we're going to be picking up some perks that benefit slashing. Uh, sharp only affects slashing instead of piercing. So dual strike is kind of out. Same thing with fan of knives. Those are the only other like key slashing abilities that I would highly recommend. We'll pick up sneaky strike eventually, but it's a it's a rare card. And everything else are small weapons. We want slashing and we want it to be a melee attack. So we're really only down to a few options here. And uh, the best of those are Blade Dance, Double Strike, and Blade Flurry. Um, Blade Flurry, of course, is better than Double Strike, but just costs more. So with uh, restrictions as they are, I'd recommend one of each. If you can get away with it from Divinations, two Blade Dances, and maybe just one Double Strike or Blade Flurry, uh, depending on your energy levels. You don't want more than four of these total because you won't have the energy to sustain it. So we're going to keep the Adrenaline because it's got the, the nice energy on it. We're bringing in Chant of Accuracy. This is one of the few sharp options we have. You can see we brought in two of the sharp options, Camouflage and Chant of Accuracy, and we're bringing the cheapest version of them. Chant is a zero cost version. That's what we want because we want to save our energy for attacks. And Camouflage, uh, the reason we bring in Camouflage is twofold. One, it gives us that sharp, and two, it does that big stealth attack. So... Uh, when we do that big AOE attack, we can camouflage first and get some stealth and make this a much bigger attack. Uh, we'll eventually be cutting both of these once we have, like I said, that sharp talent. But for now, they're good filler cards. Uh, if you can afford to, craft another deflect because this just says, hey, you have one less card in your deck, which is what we want to see. And then a really key piece, if you can afford it, is setup. This is very expensive because it costs like 300 something shards for the upgraded version, right? Uh, yeah, I really only recommend the blue one because it's still zero cost and you're actually card neutral. You're not spending a card. Um, I guess they're all card neutral or positive, but the idea is you can, you'll spend all your deflex, draw as many cards as you can, and then do your setup and kind of craft the perfect hand for that turn. Uh, that does vanish, but you just want that first turn, that most important turn to be as, as pretty as possible. Uh, what else we got here? We took out, we're keeping Expert Tracker for now. Uh, for now, you'll just cast it on yourself before you do your deflex, so you know what you're going to draw. Uh, but eventually, it's it's really just a dead card in a in a DPS Andrin. It's great in all the other versions of Andrin. It's a fantastic card, but when you're the main damage dealer on a team, you want all your cards to be either replace themselves or deal damage. And although Expert Tracker does technically replace itself, it does so on the next turn because it's got that one Inspire. So it's just a slow effect. Um, like, I wouldn't blame anyone for keeping it, but it does slow you down if you keep it. So eventually we'll cut it, but for now it is our, our best option to kind of keep in as a filler card. Uh, we cut Hunter's Mark uh, for the 
the camouflages. We cut the aim shots and the ruptures because they're ranged attacks and or they're two cost attacks that aren't repeat. Because uh, we'd rather hit multiple times with two energy instead of just hit once for a small amount. And uh, yeah, what do I got here? So we added some sharp. We added some mark. We uh, added some repeat and AoE. And uh, added some card draw. Of the ones, those most important ones is this AoE, the mark, and probably the sharp. If I would say in that order. And if you have anything extra to spend, uh, take a look at the Act 2 deck to see if you can craft any of that. Because otherwise this is this is pretty good. Like, obviously upgrading the adrenaline is nice, but that's very expensive. Uh, and none of the else of these really you want to upgrade. Like the Blade Dance, all you're getting is uh, one extra damage. You don't want the four cost version, you want the two cost. Uh, just because energy efficiency here and uh, Yeah, that is the act one deck. Let's go uh, Look at perks and then we'll go take this deck for a spin on a combat. So perks Andrin has a lot of perks. He needs to be spending as you can see in my my extra perks section here I don't have many left because I had to spend them everywhere else uh, For my run. I actually did not have this plus one speed Um uh, just because I'm trying to keep this, the Andrin slower than the rest of my team. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, right now, I guess. So, ideally you want your damage dealer to be going after your other people so that... Like, I want my, my tanks and supports to be putting debuffs on the enemy, buffing me, and stuff like that. And the, I have a very fast team here, uh, except for Heiner. So, Gustav speeds up Heiner, and then Andrin has to be slower than... Gustav and Bree and the sped up Heiner. So to do so, I didn't give him any of his... I didn't pick up any of his perks. This one, I'm just here for this. Normally I suggest it because it just only costs one. This says one speed for one perk. This one says one speed for three perks. So this one's a lot more worthwhile to pick up. You get more bang for your buck uh, than this one. But in general, you might need to be artificially slowing him down. Uh, I even replaced his starting armor that says plus one speed because I want him to go slower. I want to be going last on my team, but as fast as possible. So it's a nice little line you have to ride. Um, if this is stressing you out, don't worry about it too much. Just play Andrin for his big damage turn on turn two. But ideally, you want him to be going last on the team, which is harder, easier said than done with the speedy, speedy scout. Back to perks. So uh, the correct amount of speed... Energy ones, the first two on the first turn, of course. Big ones here is uh, Mark plus uh, Mark reduces slashing resistance. Since all of our damage we're building into is going to be slashing damage, this is a big, big deal. Uh, the stealth one isn't as important as some of our other stealth characters, but it's still a uh, damage multiplier. Increased stealth damage, yes, please. Uh, physical, we want all the slashing perks. We need all the sharp perks. And on sharp specifically, we're saying... Sharp increases slashing, but not piercing. Uh, this gives a little bump on the, the damage increase of Sharp. Uh, Fury. We're actually going to be picking up some Fury items. Uh, I actually recommend getting two or three Fury items if you can afford it. Um, as we go along, there's a couple guaranteed ones that we'll mention. And so we want Fury charges. And I'm pretty sure the math right now checks out that the third one here is the best. Fury is 5%, but Bleed hurts more. Uh, if you're not willing to go that route or you don't think that's correct, then in that case, it's going to be this left one of plus more fury charges. Definitely pick up one or the other. Those are really big increases to our damage once we have some fury items. Uh, vulnerable. Uh, on your team, you're going to need at least two of these. You need the vulnerable reduces slashing damage only. Well, physical damage only. Slashing, piercing, blunt. Uh, you can't pick that up if you have mixed damage dealers on your team, but if Andrin is your main damage dealer and no one else is really caring to do anything, this is a big increase. Uh, instead of 5% per, it's 8% per. That's a, it's a big deal. You're also going to want the vulnerable on the team stacks to 12 and costs and uh, reduces it one instead of two at a time. Another big deal. And of course, Andrew's probably going to pick up one of these because the people applying vulnerable, like your frontliners, are going to be picking up this plus charges. So... Overall, you're going to spend three or four people on your team picking up these vulnerable perks. So, yes, you'd like Andrew not to since he's spending it elsewhere, but you may have to. So, I have it here on the list for that reason. Elemental, powerful. We are a main damage dealer. And powerful, if you recall, I said we can get it to six charges guaranteed once we hit level three. 
And so the six is the magical number to make this right one the best one. Powerful on this hero increases damage and healing done by 10% instead of 5%. So we're getting 60% increased damage instead of 50%. In, well, instead of this 60% increased damage. But if we get it to 10, that's 100% increased damage. So we have a, a, a much higher ceiling for this one. Uh, so this is the one you want to pick up because even... Even without any items, we can get to 6 every turn, not a problem. And with items, we can get to 10 every turn, easy peasy. So, uh, this is a really big damage increase for us. Uh, extra card at the beginning of the game. And last but not least, if your team is running any sort of bless, I highly recommend the bless increases 1.5 instead of just 1. That just adds up very quickly. Uh, if, But you may not be running bless on the team. This current setup, I'm only running it in Act 4, but even then, it's still worth it just for when I do have the Bless. I'd rather have I'd rather have the the, soup, the extra power for the Archon fight than the extra shards in the early town, but you can manage that as you see fit. And uh, yeah, that's it for perks. There is a link in the description, hopefully. And uh, let's go uh, give it a whirl, now that I've talked forever. So you're going to see me playing the other two people pretty fast without much explanation. We'll see how much I, I actually say about these all. Um, I'm going to give Andrin as many cards as possible. And just be doing the normal support and frontline things here. See, I had to artificially lower Andrin's speed a little bit. Which means some of these monsters actually had a chance um, to go first. So it's... Uh, it's a thing. So for Gustav here, there will be a video about him shortly. His goal right now is to speed up Mr. Uh, robot here. Now Robot's going before Andrin. Important in this setup. Don't mind me. And more important thing is, Andrin, in this setup, normally as a solo DPS, you do want some sort of support from your teammates. So in this particular one, uh, Gustav is handing out lots of sharp. And right now I'm trying to even out all these monsters. So this one's immune to vulnerable. So applying vulnerable to him is not reducing the sharp resistances. So I'm trying to get the rest of these as weak as possible so that for Andrin's turn, he can AOE them down in a monstrous fashion. So, let me slow it down here for Andrew. So, goal is I want to draw my useful cards. Uh, so I want to dig in deep as my deck as possible. And the ways to dig, I have Deflex and I have Setup. So Setup, you don't want to use it first. You want to use it last. So I want to be using Deflect first. But before I use Deflect, if I still have Expert Tracker, I need to do that first. So I'll use Expert Tracker, look at my top of my deck. This is the order of the cards. So this is the top card. And going down the deck. Um, these are the only cards in my deck right now. So I don't need the Deflex. I'm looking for the Chant of Accuracy, the Camouflage, and the Adrenaline. And if you look at my hand here, I've got one draw plus a draw three and put back two. So I've got basically four draws. So one, two, three, four. I don't have to discard anything. If I needed to dig deeper, I could be ditching some of these to dig through the deck faster or skipping the cards I don't need. But in this case, this is perfectly fine. So I will deflect first to draw. And now I have only three cards left in my deck because I know the bottom two are deflex, right? So I now draw all my useful cards and put back and do some math on my turn. Now, before you do this setup, make sure you have enough space in your hand because right now I have 10 cards. If I had another card in my hand, setup would have only drawn two and put two back, which is very bad juju. So I would have had to cast something else first, like say an adrenaline or a chant of accuracy. You know, try to find something. You might have to spend a couple cards before you use setup, but you want to use setup last. So here I have five energy plus two from adrenaline, so seven. Uh, most important cards, I'm going to need the AoE and the stealth. I'll combo these together. I'll stealth and then AoE. So one, two, three. Uh, this is three, four, five, six, seven. So all the slices. So I can put the double strikes and the blade flurry back. Um, because. So sharp first. Uh, if I had my talent, if I had momentum, I'd be wanting to make sure I do a melee attack before I do any of my, my big AoE, but I don't have that yet. If I had an item that we're going to talk about later, I'd want to do a couple melee attacks beforehand. So usually the play plan is slice, slice, camouflage, 
Blade Dance. But since I don't have any of those, I'm actually going to Camouflage first to get the Sharp. Blade Dance. Oh, hey, look, I just killed all the bad guys. And then this guy was immune to Vulnerable, so I'm just going to slice him down. And what do you know? He be gone. I'll show you an, uh, an Act 4 fight as well, so don't worry too much about that. And, uh, yeah, let's go to Act 2. So, with the Act 2 decklist... Oops, I can click this, right? Not much has changed. Uh, I did find a second Blade Dance, so I'm playing that. Uh, if you have an Ambidextrous, you can play that, that kind of stuff. The biggest change here is Sneaky Strike. So I got rid of Camouflage, and I replaced it with Sneaky Strike. And the reason is because those couple melee attacks are going to start to matter. Because in Act 2, the middle of Act 2, you're going to hit level 3, and you're going to have these the number of melee attacks matter. So I want my fourth attack is going to be my strongest one. I have one, two, three set up, and then my fourth one's a powerful one. And I don't necessarily have enough energy to be casting four attacks. So in this setup, it's slice, slice, sneaky strike. So then I've done one, two, three attacks, and sneaky strike applies the stealth. So my fourth attack can be this blade dance for a massive AoE or this blade flurry for a single target. So, and I'll also, I've picked up the wild hunt now. So the play order is, uh, wild Hunt and Adrenaline when they come up, and Chant of Accuracy. Draw, 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 draw. Set up the perfect turn and go Slice, Slice, Sneaky Strike, Blade Dance. Or Slice, Slice, Sneaky Strike, Blade Flurry. Um, I wouldn't mind two Sneaky Strikes. It's not as important to get stealth on all of your attacks as maybe some other uh, damage dealers we've talked about in the past. But it is still very powerful uh, to just amp up the damage just a little bit more. But more importantly, most of the damage amplification I'm looking to do is these these powerful stacks because remember they're disappearing every turn so i have to i have to recap them every turn and then eventually we're going to have an item that'll give us fury every time we do a melee attack as well so we have to do a couple setup attacks with the slices and the sneaky strike before we do our big aoe and uh yeah i think really that's it about we'll eventually be cutting chant of accuracy but i mean it's still a decent for now like if i had some more deflex maybe i'd cut the accuracy but really we're waiting for the uh, the serrated weapons before we cut that that chant. Uh, you just kind of got to balance it out between how many attacks you can make and how many like how many attacks you can afford with your current energy setup and how many cards you're going to have on a given turn. In this setup, since I have two warriors and no mages, I'm going to have a lot of cards but very few energy, so I have to be very energy efficient, and Chant of Accuracy is helping fill that role of energy efficiency uh, on my first couple of turns. Uh, yes. I think that's it for items. Uh, I mean, for for Act 2. Let's go look at items. So, the item I'm talking about, and I'll show you where it's at. Um, I, I can show you right now. So, in Act 2, Raging Beast here has a specific item. So, let's see. Uh, Fury? Yeah. So, the Cave Minotaur has Edge of Fury. Twice a turn, when you play melee attack, gain Fury. And if you recall, our play pattern is small attack, small attack, Sneaky Strike, Big Attack. Well, that plays really well into Edge of Fury and Berserker Claw. If you can get Berserker Claw, great. That says three times a turn the same thing. But that's not guaranteed. We are guaranteed to go pick up an Edge of Fury if we go to the cave. So it's very nice to uh, be able to rely on that. Uh, there are other melee attack ones. Things that say draw cards. Uh, if you're leaning into... If you pick up one of those and decide to try that route out or for some reason aren't going the Fury route, which I highly recommend... The, the draw route, you'll probably want to ride a couple of zero-cost slices because you won't be able to afford to cast all the one-cost slices because you only get that one-cost reduction on the first three melee attacks. And stuff like Continuum Blade and Flail and stuff, you'll draw so many cards. Like, you want to be able to play every card you draw, but these are going to draw you past the amount of energy you have. So you might change some of those slices to zero-costs just because you have so much card draw available to you. Or... I guess maybe if you don't have the, the warrior supporting you with card draw, this might just be the option you run with the setup I showed you. Uh, I think elsewise, the other things are going to be Fury and Powerful. The Berserk Potion is guaranteed in the green biome if you go to Maluka's shop and you have some way to pay for it or you give her the horn from Belfir or she's in your party. Uh, so the Berserk Potion is pretty guaranteed way, and that's a pretty nice set of Fury. Uh, I also really like the Gladiator Helmet on Andrin. Uh, it's, it's 
Gladiator Helmet's in a really good spot, and if you have any sort of Fury synergies, in which case, I think Andrin is a great Fury player, uh, it, it goes a long way. It's got solid resistances. It gives you a little bit of vitality to begin with so that that first uh, round of bleed doesn't affect you as much. And with all this Fury stuff, we actually... The pet I recommend for Andrin... Oh, is it not gonna... Is it just Mozzie? Anyway, the pet I recommend for Andrin is Mozzie because if you're going this Fury route, you can then uh, recoup that that bleed damage for anything other than the final boss. Uh, and you just have to have a plan for the final boss for final boss for bleed. Uh, or just, you know, kill Hans fast enough that you get to keep your pets. And this just plays really well into the, the, the Fury strategy. There are, of course, other options where you do attacks which shouldn't be too much of a problem. They are random attacks and they don't trigger. None of them are melee attacks. Like these, these don't have any tags to them. And Andrin's setup play pattern is melee, melee, big attack, which since none of these trigger that melee, they don't really play into his strategy very well. That first attack is gonna be much weaker than his third attack of the round. Uh, so that's why I highly recommend Mozzie because we don't really need any of the attacks. The attacks are random and the attacks don't play into our effect. Um, I said Fury. What was the other thing I wanted? Um, powerful. Uh, I'm always going to recommend these items for DPS characters. For Andrin, I would I would recommend at least one, just just one of the two. Uh, that's Titan Gauntlets from the Hydra, or the oh, it's, I really wish it'd show up here, or the Lava Crystal from Ignado in the Fire Realm. Both of those bosses are guaranteed to drop these items that create powerful for you. And combine one of those items with your passive that says powerful every time you do a melee attack and you'll have max powerful stacks every turn for that plus 100% damage. So it adds up pretty fast, pretty fast. Of course, Power Coil and Nullifier are just fantastic cards. I think one more thing to discuss is Sharp. Uh, there are a couple sharp items, depending on how good your team is at feeding you sharp early. Remember I said you're going to get like 20 or 30 sharp on your own from your, your talent. You may need to fill in that last little bit with some itemization of either assassin tools for that sneaky strike to do it. Uh, or the, the quiver is a pretty decent one. The brass amulet, if you got Gustav in your team, will probably be picking it up for you. But otherwise, this is a really great pickup for you because that talent card is affected by it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. So, it's really lean into Fury, uh, one powerful item, and, uh, any sharp to fill in the rest, and you will be a happy camper. That is it for items. Let's go to Act 4. So, in Act 4, we have to start thinking about Archon Fight. Um... With that, I don't remember. I don't think Andrin really has to change much for Archon Fight. The biggest thing is you can start crafting and uh, maybe picking up Ambidextrous. I, of course, have found a couple. Uh, Ambidextrous says, hey, duplicate something in your hand and it costs less. And the more you do this, the better. And if you really want to see something super cool, check out my little video clip where I say I, I took a blade flurry and I brought it down to a negative three. And when it has negative three, you can redraw it and get the exhaust to say, hey, it's now negative two, negative one. So you can play a zero cost blade flurry multiple times in a turn because it's actually a negative cost blade flurry. So it's a small little trick. It requires lots of ambidextrous, but that's kind of the play pattern Andrew is going to get into is you get you just get a very few cards. So you can see I just have one slice at this point because I've got these two ambidextrous now. You're really only going to cast like anywhere from like three to six melee attacks in a turn, give or take your your items and your play pattern. And you're going to do a couple cheap ones first and then your big ones. And so in this case, it would be slice, sneaky strike, blade flurry, blade flurry, blade flurry. <laughs> so, or before I get to Archon, it's blade dance, blade dance, blade dance. And honestly, if you want to, you can actually cut this blade dance if you've got enough other good cards going on and just start using the blade flurry to kill off monsters one at a time. Uh... It might slow you down to round two on a couple of the fights around, you know, it might add a round occasionally here or there, but just being able to reliably kill a single target is very beneficial, especially in any hard fights or difficult fights. And once you get to Archon, the Blade Dance is not going to be doing you any good anyway, and it's just going to fill up your hand. So either 
plan on hitting those final that final campsite before Archon at 16 cards and cutting Blade Dance, or just cut it early here and just not rely on it anymore. Uh, either way is viable. Uh, once you get to Act 4, you should have a pretty good idea of how you're feeling about all your cards anyway. Uh, you can see we've cut the, the Song of Sharp. Uh, even, even if I didn't have Sharp from my other teammates, it's just nothing compared to this Serrated Weapons. This Serrated weapon says, hey, gain 20, whereas that Song says gain 4, so kind of kind of a big difference there so once we have this all of the sharp just feels meaningless unless it's coming from someone else on our team uh what do we got going on here uh da, da, da. am i missing anything we've upgraded this adrenaline and or found a corrupted one uh, i don't really recommend running more than one adrenaline um you don't want the you don't need a recurring one either you just need a little extra energy boost for things like serrated weapons and these ambidextrous, because once you're done playing these ambidextrous, they're going to be replaced by one or zero cost attacks. So you're going to be more efficient on later turns than you are on early turns. And the serrated weapons vanishes as well. So you just need a little, a small boost of adrenaline uh, to begin the fight. And uh, then you should be smooth sailing afterwards. And yeah, I think we're just going to go take a look at the fight. Let me check my notes, make sure I haven't missed anything before we go check out that fight. Uh... Items at 4 team comp. Yep, let's go do the fight and then we'll talk about team comps and uh, yeah. Burr, burr, burr. Sure, I don't care. Something nice. Something amazing, I guess. So, Robot has super speedy items. That's why he is no longer being helped out by Gustav. Uh, I do need to slow these guys down. I think Heiner will be able to do it. Why am I talking about their turns? I'll talk about their turns later. Let me just try to play through this. Whoops. What's this? This. <laughs> Doing just normal Gustav things. Don't mind the Gustav. Gustav might be nerfed sooner rather than later because he is just very, very powerful. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of extra sharp on Andrew to begin with. And set up for uh, round two in case we get there. Same thing with Heiner. Heiner's going to uh, put some vulnerable on the enemies and set up for round two if we get there. One, two, three, four. Blam, blam. Fusion lasers! Followed by more lasers. So, uh, monsters now all have 10 vulnerable. It stacks to 12, so we're almost there. Andrina is getting a couple extra cards and has lots of sharp. Let's see if we can make that even better. If I was scared for the turn, I'd have a Citadel to cast, but uh, we're not scared for the turn. We'll try to kill them all before uh, they take a turn here. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm not, I'm not humming. I'm not a hummer. Got a little bit of extra powerful on him. I don't think he has. He does have a Lava Crystal, so I'll be, I'll be easily capped on powerful this turn, without a doubt. Especially if I did this battle shout, which I don't think I'm going to. Alright, so everyone's at 12 vulnerable. I just need to apply some mark for some sharp resistances. I mean, slashing resistance. As you can see, most of these are pretty low on the sharp resistances. Or slashing resistance. Keep saying sharp. Uh, neither of these really matter, so let's set up for another turn. Alright, Andrin, what you got? You drew, what, nine cards, maybe? I've only got four cards left in the deck. Uh, I want to be drawing as many of them as possible. To do so, I want to deflect and then set up. Uh, before I just set up, though, you see I have so many cards that if I played set up, I would only draw two. So I want to make sure I spend a card. So Wild Hunts is always the first one. And then I can do Serrated Weapons. And now I need to draw the rest of my hand. Only three left in the deck, so now is perfectly a good time to set up. Useful cards, two deflects aren't going to be do me any good, so I'll put those back. Adrenaline, and now I can kind of plan out my attack pattern here. Seven, so I've got seven energy, plus three for momentum, so ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Should be fine as long as these cost zero when I copy something. I'll look to copy the AoE. So zero cost, and with ambidextrous. So this one is original two cost one that's going to zero. Because these are left to right. So these show 
Like this is my hand left to right. So this is the one that's, if you can see, this one's a zero cost in the far right, and this one's a two cost in the far left. So I actually want this, make sure when you're using ambidextrous, you, you click the correct one. And also make sure you don't accidentally click one of the one that's vanishing from like a mirror or something. I've done that before. Uh, pay attention to which one you're copying. There is a difference between these two cards. This one is better for me to copy. Because now this is a, a minus two cost blade dance. So if I still had those deflects, I could draw it and replay it and it would still be zero cost. Um, I said I could play everything, right? Okay, so I need to trigger Edge of Fury twice and I need to trigger Momentum three times. So Slice is, slice is a cheap one. And then I don't really have anything else cheap to do. So it's either Sneaky Strike and Blade Dance or Blade Dance, Sneaky Strike, Blade Dance. And I need the Edge of Fury triggered. So Sneaky Strike will get me all the way there. Uh, momentum won't trigger all the way, but I am already at max powerful. So I only need the one more attack. So we'll Sneaky Strike. This guy's got evasion, so obviously got to slap that one. And then it's just blade dance, blade dance, blade dance. And momentum has been giving me energy back. I still have enough for blade flurry. And if I didn't have enough energy to kill everyone or done enough damage, I would take specific targets. I would have ambidextrous to copy the blade flurry and picked out single targets. Uh, to make my next turn better and everyone else was still setting up for the next turn as well all right next we got team comps and unlocks andrin is a starting character he is unlocked from the beginning team comps this particular team comp let's take a look at him so heiner here was setting up for just lots of using fusion lasers to apply a lot of vulnerable and then steel forge to keep my team super healthy and uh, just trying to draw through his deck and make that happen as often as possible I did give him some artificial speed because they came up and uh, I didn't want Gustav to waste time buffing Heiner speed when Gustav could be doing other things. So fast, slow robot became fast robot. And uh, yeah, robot didn't have to spend much on talents because uh, it's a robot. All it does is block. I block. I play vulnerable. I win. That is robot. Uh, Bree. Bree was here as my support. Bree is here to apply Vulnerable and feed the cards and Powerful to me. Early game, the Powerful is super impactful until I get the items that uh, I can rely on being uh, Powerful myself. Uh, and then Bree, we'll talk about this later in the Bree video, but Bree has lots of extra energy from the way I have her set up. So big things like Citadel are big flashy plays that Bree can handle. We'd already did equipment and perks. Um... Bree does not need sight. That is a bad choice here. That doesn't help my game plan at all. Mainly it's the adding mark early game with lots of intimidates. So this mark for intimidates and then lots of vulnerable and uh, just card efficiency. Oh, also remember powerful. Bree was giving me powerful. So she got the double perks here for more powerful. And then Gustav is the enabler of enablers here for this comp. Chance of accuracy are a big deal. And uh, sharp, sharp, sharp. Uh, maybe a little bit of speed manipulation. But uh, mainly the sharp and keep the team alive. Late game, in the end game, uh, Ballad of Conquest will give me Bless for the final Archon fight. Uh, it's pretty fun. Um, just here to give me sharp. Sharp and Bless. Gustav is my DPS feeder. Just give give the buffs to the Andrin. Andrin, go boom. Uh, Gustav is also meant to be my fastest character. I ended up giving the fast item to Heiner. But if I didn't give it to Heiner, Gustav would have been quicker than everyone else, done the speed manipulation, make sure my team goes first, their team goes second. And by second, I mean not at all, because I don't want their team to take a turn. And uh, yeah, that's covered for why I did this team. Let's go look at other acceptable places to slot uh, Andrin in. So, for an Andrin team. Uh, an Andrin DPS team. Because Andrin can do Andrew can do a lot of roles. Andrin could be a support, Andrin can be a DPS, I mean a, a tank. Uh, but uh, he can even be a healer. But as a DPS, I want my Andrin. He's going to be doing lots of physical damage. Preferably slashing like we set up. So uh, Vulnerable plays really well and Sharp. So Gustav is just a super duper fit for that reason. Uh, any of the Warriors are nice because they can funnel Sharp to Andrin via uh, Sharpen and Grinding Stone. So you want your probably your Frontliner to be some sort of uh, Warrior and your your support to be some sort of warrior uh, because Andrin is not very energy dependent. So you don't really need a mage support. Uh, don't get me wrong. A mage support is great. You can slot in any sort of support here. 
Andrin does need a decent amount of cards, so warriors and mages are great for that. Uh, you're obviously going to need a healer on the team. Of the healers, Andrin does well with either the Gustav giving sharp or one of these other ones giving bless. Um, Andrin is very versatile here. Uh, his damage type does not get along with other damage types, though, because we're going to that vulnerable perk that says uh, only physical resistances are reduced. Uh, if we were mix and match with another DPS, uh, probably I would mix and match with Lightning, just because Lightning benefits from Mark a lot better than some of the other ones, because it has a, a lot more multi-hits. Uh, because Wilbur, Wilbur, Wilbur loves Wet, and Mark acts like Wet. Uh, but then you can't take the vulnerable that says slashing is reduced. Uh, Andrin also goes well with scouts and warriors because those are the ones that apply Mark. And Mark is reducing slashing damage for us. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Like, it's... Right now, slashing and sharp is in a good place. Uh, that may change in the future. But just kind of look through the perks. Um... Find ways to amplify his damage and find ways to play around or have other people add that so that Andrew's not applying it himself. Andrew can apply Mark by himself pretty well uh, in the late game, especially level 5. But like, he, he requires that one talent that says energy spent. So to buff that up, you could just have a mage give him more energy. He requires, he scales very well with sharp. So someone to give him sharp. He scales well with fury. There is no way to give fury from another teammate, unfortunately. Uh, scales well with powerful ways to give him powerful and scales well with bless like those are just andrin can be affected by all as as a physical dps and he's got so many ways to amplify his damage that there's just so many ways you can help him out and that's all i got and if you like what you see please let me know with uh, some feedback critiques that kind of stuff also, there's the option to tip. We will eventually be doing memberships, but for now, tipping is the best way. There's a little heart beneath the uh, screen here and above the comments that says, hey, I liked what you saw. I saw. Thank you very much. That goes a long way to making sure I can uh, do future content like this and put more and more time into it as we go on. Uh, yeah, I will catch you later. Peace.